May the words that we are about to hear take root in our heart, that we may be inspired to speak and act in ways that make for a beloved community. May Hazelton has long been an advocate for social and racial justice in Lake County. She is a native Floridian, born and raised <laughs> in Tavares. She's a retiree with over 34 years of federal civilian service and three years of active duty in the U.S. Army. She is an experienced human resource professional who worked for 30 years with the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, the Pentagon, Army Headquarters, Army Command, and other operational level activities. She is a member of Friendship CME Church in Tavares, the Tavares African American Heritage Organization, Criterion Civic Club, Tri-City NAACP, and the Lake County Voices of Reason. It is our pleasure to welcome May Hazelton. I can put on headphones. Oh, sorry. And welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Lake County Justice Online Lecture Series. I am both humbled and privileged to be the first speaker. My topic for this evening is the question of race. Has Lake County changed in the last 30 years? But before we get started, I would like to spend just a few minutes in tribute to Representative John Lewis, that great civil rights activist who died Friday night at the age of 80. Until the very end, he gave voice to the fight for equality. Late in June, he said of the nationwide protests, it was very moving, very moving to see hundreds and thousands of people of all colors from all over America and around the world take to the streets and speak up, to speak out, and to get into what I call the good fight, good trouble. This feels and looks so different, he said, of the Black Lives Matter movement, which drove the anti-racism demonstration. It is so much more massive and inclusive, he added. There will be no turning back. Next slide, please. There's no turning back. So here we are this evening, looking over our shoulders to our past, but only so that it informs our past, our future, and propels us in the direction we collectively choose to go. I'll be candid with you. Preparing for this presentation was more difficult than I first imagined. There's not many, there's not much published data Point, uh, many published data points or studies done with regards to improvements of racial diversity, improvements in ethnic curriculum in our county school systems or employment statistics. I searched. That's what I'm very good at, finding data points. For instance, if you want to know the current ethnic makeup of Lake County, you won't find it on the county's official websites. Um, and I checked, I have a friend of mine that I called as recently as this afternoon. I buzzed her up, I rang her up and I said, do you know any other data points? And she said, no. But, but by the 2010 census, it's 82% white, 9.8% black and 12.1% Hispanic. So I had to depend on, I had to come outside of my own comfort zone to figure out how to approach this. So how do we want Lake County to look? So I started there, how do we think it looks? So take a look at this picture. Now that guy you see smiling and hugging that guy, now that's my pastor right there. That's my pastor. And that's what he does. He's smiling, he's happy. He's always hugging someone because he loves everybody, no matter who you are, regardless of race. And he says that all the time. Look at the lady in the middle. What is she saying? Lake is greater than hate. And this group of people at the bottom, now those aren't Lake County citizens. That's just a that's just a some snapshot I found. But it's indicative of how we think we look, 
how we want ourselves to look. We've got, our, we've got black folks, we've got older folks, we've got young folks there. So, and they're all happy. This is how we think we want to look. Next slide. But we got to talk about history. History is important. More than any other topic, it is about us. Whether one deems the present state of Lake County as good or awful or both, history reveals how we got to this point. History. Next. It is an indisputable fact our county has one of the darkest, cruelest, most racist histories in this state. It's a fact. Look at the devil in the grove, Groveland Four. That picture with the man standing over the bodies, that's Willis McCall. As recently as 2019, there, we're dealing with bringing in a statue of a Confederate general here. But you see that gentleman in the middle with the, with the arm sling? That's Frank Woods. I know Frank personally. Here's what he said on July the 7th when the county commissioners finally decided after a somewhat bitter two-year battle to stop that statue. Here's what he said, and here's what I focus on. With your vote to return the statue, Lake County can now be forward-looking and can concentrate on issues that improve the quality of life for all of today's Lake County citizens and for our citizens yet born. Think about that. We're looking at our past 30 years from 1990 to 2020. And I think about all that's happened in, in, in those 30 years, but as recently as 2018, 19, and 20, we're fighting against bringing a Confederate statue and all that means into Lake County. But then I think about Frank Woods, who's a friend of mine, and what he believes that vote means and where we can go from here. Because he's not thinking about what's over our shoulders. He's looking for our children that are not born yet. Next slide, please. This is an interesting picture. I don't think I know anyone in there, but every time I think of what I've gone through in the past two years of my personal fight against that statue, I look at this, I read these signs, because this is what we're talking about. No racism in Lake County. Stop the statue. This statue does not represent Lake County. But every time I look at it, unite for what's right. But every time I look at this picture, what I really see, if you see the black lady in the middle with the green shirt, look above her, I see the we. I see the we, because this is about the we. We don't want racism in Lake County. We want it to stop the statue. This statue does not, re we say this statue does not re represent us. Everyone that's on this call tonight, everyone who took the time out of their Sunday afternoon to, to listen to this, who thought it worthwhile and worthy enough to enter into this discussion, to listen to what I have to say, and, and it's about we, it's about us. And if we're not willing to be the we, then trying to figure out has Lake County changed over the 30 years is not a discussion worthwhile of having because it is a we discussion. It's not a May discussion, it's not an individual, it's a we discussion. Next slide. Now, if, if you remember early on a few slides back, that first slide, it said, how do we think that we wanna look? How we think Lake County looks? So my, my task in this presentation was not to look at individual cities, not to look at Leesburg, not to look at Eustis or Mount Dora Tavares or Claremont or Groveland or all of the cities, any of the 14 municipalities or any of the smaller uh, uh, areas in Lake County. It was a look at holistically at Lake County. So I went to the county website because I wanted to know how the county chose to be seen. And until last night, 
um, there was there's this this uh, interactive visitor guide that says welcome to Lake County and it's a hundred pages of it and there was no nobody in there that looked like me there were no uh, black or brown faces in it and this visit Lake County Florida to the right real Florida real close it it, did, it wasn't inviting to anyone here it wasn't inviting how it, it doesn't tell me if I'm coming to Lake County that you're really trying to invite a diverse population to come into Lake County. And so I, it, it's interesting of how Lake County seeds itself. So when you put in a visitor guide, now I didn't look at Lake County in isolation. I went to Sumter County, I went to Marion County. I took a peek on their websites to see what their county visitor guides say and they're much more of a diversified view than what we have in Lake County. So I have it on my checklist to say, hey guys, when you do your visitor guides and, and visit Lake County, make sure that the representation for Lake County is much more, much more of a diverse view of Lake County. And so that was the research part of, of, of this, this presentation. And then I started talking to people because this is not a question that I can answer from an individual. Remember earlier I said it is the we. So what do other people say? So I started getting on the phone and talking to people. Next slide, please. I wanted to hear what others had to say, and not just people who look like me, by race, by age, or by gender. I called on some of my friends, and so here's what people are talking. So I gave them the subject of this presentation just the way it was given to them and asked them to give me their thoughts. When I look at the upper government county level positions, I don't see any black people there. We don't have any more than token representation. Maybe one to meet a quota or something. A county commissioner recently said there was community policing. And I know that's not true. There are still restaurants that make it very clear that you are not welcome when you come in. It's the stairs you receive. You won't be refused service, but you know you are not welcome. As a Lake County substitute teacher for over six years, I can honestly say that the white schools and the black schools were different. In the black schools, I had to use my own monies to make copies because the books were torn or they weren't, there weren't enough to go around. They shared iPads because there weren't enough to go around versus going to the white school where every child had an iPad and every child had a book. CB from Tavares. I was an Hispanic dental hygienist in Lake County. My four-year-old son was handed a Confederate flag at a parade in Wooden Park in Tavares. I endured so much open racism at work, especially after Trump was elected. I took it because I had to provide a life for my family. I had to mask my feelings at work on a daily basis. I had to hold back the tears. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I moved with my husband and family to Texas. As a military brat, growing up in a diverse environment, Sometimes it feels to me, like many Blacks in Lake County, have PTSD. C.G. from Leesburg. I live in Claremont. As communities grow, it brings in a diverse population. There is especially an increase in the Hispanic population, but I don't really see the diversity reflected in the elected officials. Although Claremont has an African-American police chief, there is still a conservative underpinning there. The population has changed 
but the politics have not changed. FC Claremont. It's like going back in time. I still see way too many Confederate flags. CR, Seminole County. The Lake County is still in three distinct sections. We have a progressive area, one, those who have pulled away from the elasticity of the darkest white supremacy that was the underbelly of the county into the light of modern day and are looking for buy-in and advocacy of a diverse population. Two, a slow moving retirement area and unfortunately, three, those who still revel and relish in the old South where everyone knew his or her place. We have to realize if we're not at the table, we're not on the menu. B.S.C. Leesburg. I live in Orange County, but attend church in Tavares. Occasionally, I take my family to the arcade in the mall in Le Leesburg. I always get this eerie feeling upon entering. They only have pictures of white basketball players from the 60s, pictures of all white parades. All you see is white history. It's not very welcoming to me as an adult. I ask my husband, where are the blacks? NC in Apopka. It's changed somewhat. Some steps for us have been made, but there's still much to be done. Lake County is mostly good people, but there are some bad apples, some very, very bad apples. I measure how far we've come as 50-50, 50% gained and 50% more to accomplish. Yet we're more, much more alike than we are different. Racism is very settled, not as open as it used to be. I tell you, this is as though being a black pop, a politician in Lake County, you have to have very thick skin. I've been called the black bitch. I don't know how many times I've been called the N word. And I've been threatened by the KKK several times. GM, Eustace. You're always being told in hushed undertones, remember, you're in Lake County as if it's some kind of warning against some unknown danger lurking just around the corner. P.S. Eustace. It, Lake County, is certainly behind other cities and counties around us. The issue with the Confederate statue situation shows me it has the ability to change. What we have to do is keep attending city council and county commission meetings to have a voice. It's not good enough now to say you're not a racist. You have to be proactive against racism. The good old boy system is still in place. We must intentionally look at employment practices, actively pursue and promote diversity. There has to be a conscious choice to have a better, diverse group of people in leadership. M.W. Tavares. It's like going back 40 years in time. Just beneath the surface is always the feeling that you had better know your place. At the best, it's too tolerant of racism and race baiting. D.R. Leesburg. voices I heard, and there were over 30 of them. All I felt were frank and genuine and wanted to start one of the most difficult conversations we will ever have. Now of those 12 quotations you saw, quotes you saw, some of those you could easily identify that they were people of color but some of those were not people of color. So that was hard. So where does that, so wh where does that bring us? First, we have to own the story of Lake County. 
when we deny the story, it continues to define us. When we, the collective here, the collective we that's here tonight, when we own our own story, when we can talk about it, when then we can begin to write a brave new chapter. We have to own it. I, I don't know that I thought that I would hear some of the things um, that I heard. But it's not all negative. It's not all negative. We have elected county officials and the Lake Soil and Water Conservation Board. We have a black police chief in Claremont, a black mayor in Leesburg who's doing a phenomenal job, a black woman running for school board, a black man running for mayor of Groveland, a black woman running for the House of Representatives. You know, the Board of County Commissioners agreed after a two year battle to ask the governor not to send a Confederate statue to Lake County. We have other, uh, several minorities running for uh, positions in the fall. So it's not all negative, but we've got to own where we are today, that not much has really changed in 30 years. Then what do we do to change what our community is talking about? How do we change those 12 voices to something much more positive? Over the past year, um, I've worked with a group, a year and a half, I've worked with a group of people in the Lake County Voices of Reason. So I have to give you my frame of reference, a group of people with Lake County Voices of Reason to help me in my fight against bringing that statue here. And so we are a diverse group and we've had to deal with and wrestle with some tough issue. I have had to explain why certain things bother me and hurt me, but you have to listen. You have to listen. Some things, something about the environment has to change and it may be huge, like brick trying to bring in a Confederate statue or small. It may be natural or man-made, sudden, some type of disturbance or gradual like a movement, but something has to happen. And it can be as simple as what we are doing tonight Daring, daring, I say, to have this conversation. Daring. I could have taken the easy road. I could have done easy slides tonight. This could have been surface. I could have stayed right on the edge, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't think you wanted me to. So here's some ideas. We need to build trust. Understand that this is messy. It's really messy. It's uncomfortable work. And we need to be willing to get messy and to be made to be uncomfortable, to make others uncomfortable and to let others make us uncomfortable. And this is not something to dabble in. There's a, there's a, a friend of mine, I have several, and both of them are two females that I talk to on a regular basis. And we make each other uncomfortable. They ask me the hard questions and I ask them the hard questions about where we are in this, in our country today, in our community today. And when I was talking to them about what I'm doing and what we're doing here tonight, and, and I talked to them about my approach and how I was approaching it and, and what I wanted to do here tonight. And it's nothing that we have to dabble in. We have to be willing to take risks, be courageous, intentional, and in conversations about race and bias. We have to be willing to stand back and let someone tell us that not, not only the black telling white, but white telling black. We have to nurture our political allies continually. We have to know who's in the fight for us and we have to nurture those. We have to do our homework. We have to know our community. We have to know where the pressure points are and the pain points are. We've got to know that. We have to build on what we already know. You know more than you think you know, and you got to build on that and continue to build on that. And then we have to spend time building on the one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, there's a gentleman, Frank C., he's on the line, and he knows who he, is, who he is. And I call him up, and I say, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. You know, he's, a, he's white, and I want to talk about it. And so I want to put it out there. I told him once, and he laughed. And I said, if a black woman takes off her earrings, you're in trouble. 
And I had to explain to him what that meant. But I was, I was comfortable enough to tell him that. So we have to spend time building one-on-one -on -one relationships. We have to spend that time. So we have to get to, get to know each other. If when you see me and you see my black face, the only thing you learned about me was the color of my skin. You didn't learn a thing else about me. You got to get to know me one on one. And then you got to, to join an organization that's already doing the impossible. You know, I think what the Unitarian Universalist Church is doing, I think this is brave, this is new. And I know other churches are doing this in Lake County and I know other people are doing it, but this is what I'm involved in today. This is where God has put me today. So I'm doing what I've been told to do. And right at the right hand corner, change is never easy, but it's always possible. And ponder this, it, is all, it always seems impossible until it's done. It seemed impossible to me that I could take such a large question and, and, and fit it into 45 minutes or an hour, but that's, it's, it's, it, I'm getting it done. I'm trying to do my best. It's never easy, but it's always possible. Next slide. So you can make a difference. And so I don't know all of the organizations that are in Lake County. I don't know all of the organizations that are in your cities. I don't know all of the organizations that are in your different communities, but here are a few. A lady that I know is starting a Black Lives Matter class club here in Lake County. And I think that's fascinating when she gets it off the ground. I belong to the Criterion Civic Club. I belong to Better, bringing everyone together to embrace race relation. That's an organization in Tavares. And it's not, it's not, uh, it, it, it's not a formal type organization. It's where we get together and we talk about things that are good going on in our community. And we take what we learn and we discuss that and we take that back to our individual workplaces and our churches and, and people we deal with. The Lake County Voices of Reason, a phenomenal organization. And we're moving on from the statues to something else. The NAACP, the ACLU, and then I've got a sorority organization that's working with young uh, girls of color, young women of color, the Delta is working with women of color. So this is just what I put in this page. And so if I left off an organization that should be on here, you know, don't count that against me. I just put what I could think of to put on this page, but you can make a difference. I will say what you will do. Say what you will do. Make it a point to do something to make a change. So if nothing has changed in 30 years, then we, we, we don't have to shrug our shoulders and say, there's nothing we can do. We can do something. You can make a difference. I can make a difference. Next slide. I thought about this. Conversations about race may raise feelings of indifference, anger, guilt, shame, and mistrust. These feelings are all valid and expected, but we have to be committed to having courageous conversations and dialogues and engage with each other, honesty, with open-mindedness and vulnerability to listen deeply to better understand each other's perspective and to sustain the conversation when it gets uncomfortable or diverted or misunderstood. We all live in communities. Those communities can be defined in many different ways, neighborhood, city, county, religious group, school, sorority, civic groups, team, et cetera, you name it. You name the community. What's important to me is recognizing that I am part of many communities and that I feel it is my responsibility to make constructive change within as many of these groups as I can. Sometimes that means I have to lean into my own discomfort in order to make a positive change in the world around me. Thank you. Thank that you, May. My presentation. Thank you, May. Thank you. That was indeed a challenging message, and it's clear that we have a lot of work to do. 
Now, I, I know, I'm sure there have been a number of questions submitted. And uh, as you heard, you may send your questions to us via Zoom using the chat box. Kristen Hughes, a member of our tech team, will be reading the questions. We have over 70 people attending this event. So it is possible that we may not get to your question before we close. Uh, and if that should happen, I apologize in advance. So Kristen, let's get started. Thank you, Russ. So I'm gonna be reading people's questions from our chat window. If anybody has a question they'd like to add, please feel free to find your chat window and type it in the way that Val described it at the beginning of the meeting. So the first question is from Patty, who says, for people who might not have lived in Lake County in the 1970s, May, would you talk about segregated water fountains? I also wanna know if you have any knowledge of informational meetings in regards to policing in Lake County. Um, I do, I can remember, and this will date me, but I do remember segregated water fountains at Bowlwares Drug Store on Main Street in Tavares where there was a white uh, water fountain and a colored water fountain. I do remember that as a, as a young girl. Uh, and that would have been in um, the late 50s and early 60s. So I do remember that. Um, I don't have personal knowledge of police brutality uh, in Lake County, but um, I can find that information out and give some feedback on that. But I do not have personal knowledge of that. Thank you. We also have a comment from Patty W. who says, as a resource for allies of social justice, the, the website justiceinjune.org is a great resource. Justiceinjune.org. Justice, justice okay. All right, I've gotten to the end of the chat list. And there aren't a whole lot of questions here, but I've got a few more questions. So let me get them up. Excuse me one second. Apologize, I'm hunting for a particular email on my mail list here. There is a, there's a, uh, in the chat room, um, there's a question from a Frank C. Okay. Gonna... Do you have it? Um, so I have a question up. Can you, May? Yes. Can you share what some concrete, simple actions that white people can do to educate themselves on racism? Yes. Uh, the, the first thing you can do is to educate yourself on racism and to be open and honest. There are many, many books that you can read. The one that I'm reading was given to me by a close uh, white friend of mine. His name is Greg Willem and it's called White Fragility. And he, he reads that. And there's a lot of information out there. As a matter of fact, um, hold on just a moment. They can watch films and documentaries that highlight racial inequality and discrimination. So, and, I, and I'll name a few of my favorites is When They See Us, um, Dear White People, Fruitvale Station, Just Mercy, and The Hate You Give. And so it's those simple things, reading. There's, there's so much information out there um, that, that talks about inequality and racism and identifying it. And one of the things about racism is microaggressions and learning when you see the microaggressions that, that uh, people of color uh, experience on a day-to-day -day basis, for instance, grabbing your purse or things like that. And those are those microaggressions that, that we live with every single day. 
And, um, but there's many books out there and maybe we can come up with a recommended reading list. And I haven't seen that, but there's, I, well, I have seen them, a recommended reading list that we can share with, uh, with each other. But my best thing is look up books. Uh, I think uh, White Fragility is one of the best books that I've seen. And I read it. And it was given to me by uh, a friend of mine, Greg Willem. And I think it's a great book to start with. And I would recommend that one. And I'm sure that there are others out there that are recommended. Thank you, May. Uh, we had a, another person recommend that same book today, Bob Cleveland up in Wisconsin, who yes. joined us earlier today getting ready for this lecture. It uh, is he, has, he has read the book and recommended it also. It's, it's a very good book. Very All right, here's nice another question. Oops. Here's another question. Do African Americans have a responsibility to prevent racism in our own community? We do. We do. So for that question, I had to think about what, what, what that question would mean when I, when I think about that. When we see racism happen in our own community, whether it is white racism against blacks or black racism against white. It is racism. It is racism. So we have a responsibility to address it. It would be wrong of me to say that the fight is one way. The fight is both ways. If we're going to improve our community, and if I, it's the we. Remember, it's the we. So if I see instances of um, racism against someone white in my black community, then I have to address that. If I see instances of, of racism uh, against someone black in my community, we have to, we're responsible for our entire community. We're always just responsible for our community. So blacks have a responsibility for racism if it occurs in our community when we see it. We cannot ignore it. We cannot ignore it. Thank you very much. There are two questions from Henry Malott. One was, is voter protection a major issue in Lake County? It is becoming a major issue. I am a part of the formal voter protection um, process in Lake County. And we're looking at areas um, where there may be voter suppression in Lake County. So um, there, there, are, there are spots and areas in Lake County where voter protection should be looked at and viewed as very, very important that we need to focus our attention on voter protection in those areas. And there is a voter protection program in Lake County. And I would encourage anyone that's on the line today, if you can join that voter protection program, uh, please do. It is very important to protect our voters. There's another question. Do you think the increase in charter and private schools in Lake County represents an improvement in racial attitudes in the county or the opposite? I cannot answer that question. It's simply because I don't have children and I'm not prepared to answer that question. Okay, and then one last one. Do you think churches in Lake County are integrated? No, I do not. They are not. 11 o'clock is still the most segregated hour in the country. Do you think that churches in Lake County promote racial justice, even though they may not be integrated at this point? Some churches do, your church for sure. Some churches do, but not to, boy, my pastor is gonna want me to answer this question, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh. We have we, we have a cohort church that we've joined where we've attended their service and they've attended our service. But just like it, it has to be a concentrated effort, you have to want to do it. You have to want to do it. 
you you have to want to say your service may be a little bit different than mine your music may be a little bit different than mine your worship style may be a little little bit different than mine but are we not in my case in in my denomination are we not serving the same god but i don't think they look at social justice the same way um and I, and, and I, I want to be sure I say this correctly. You can't serve the same God that I serve and look at some of the things that happen, like locking up kids down on the border and think that's okay. Um, some of the things that I see you and, and, and think that's okay. So if you say you're a Christian and you think that's okay and that's part of social justice and 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 um, treating mistreating prisoners and mistreating people and and whether or not we believe in a certain li lifestyle and you mistreat them, social justice is social justice. And so if you are attending a church and you believe in God and you say that I'm a church member, but I can put social justice aside i am reading this book called the 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 cross and the lynching tree where back in the 60s people attended lynchings on fridays and saturdays and got up and went to church on sunday morning mm. got up and went to church on sunday morning hear what i'm saying so when we look at churches and social justice and i know it sometimes it's kind of hard and I'm not talking churches and politics. That's different. I'm talking churches and social justice. Social justice is whether someone eats. Social justice is whether it's right to separate a child and his parent. You know, that's social justice. And sometimes people get all tied up in, well, that's politics, that's Democrat, and that's Republican. We're not talking that. We're talking what social justice and what churches should be about now those are my views those 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 are my views thank you we've had another offer of a resource a uh, friend of ours perry berkowitz shared that a book he just finished which is entitled how to be an anti-racist uh, by professor dr ibram x kendi is worth I reading have that. i and have that and discussing by anybody who believes in racial justice in Lake County or anywhere. Um, and encourage you all to get a copy and take a look at that. Okay, thank you. I noticed there's, um, there's a question that didn't get asked and I think it's kind of an interesting one. So, um, because it was part of a three-part question, uh, but the end of that question uh, that included, do you think churches in Lake County are integrated? It was a question that said, is there, Bruce, is there police brutality against people of color in Lake? Which brings up the question of um, relationship between uh, police and blacks in Lake County. May, do you have anything to say about that? Um, I, have, I do. Uh, if you remember, one of the groups that I recommended that I'm a part of is better. And that's out of Tavares. And the police chief, Stoney Lubins, is on that group. And so my relationship with him is, is rather unique because he is on that group. And we, and I won't go back into the history of how we founded that group, or maybe, maybe I will. Um, my church came to my pastor, Pastor Watkins, and said that we were uncomfortable with how race relations were going in the city of Tavares. And this was about three years ago. We were kind of uncomfortable and some things were going on. And this, this was a little bit after the Trayvon Martin um, uh, incident in Sanford. And so he took it upon himself to talk to the, the pastors in Lake County and, and I'm sorry, the pastors in Tavares. And he had a group of people, mostly pastors. And then he had, from the, the city uh, leaders out of Tavares and we, we met. And that's where the group uh, formulated from that one meeting. And we've been meeting for almost th for two and a half years since that point. So we got to meet with uh, Chief Lubins. And from that meeting, uh, one of the things that came out of that was that 
the police were not friendly. They seemed to be un very unfriendly to African Americans. They didn't speak to us, but they seemed to be friendlier um, to whites that like they wouldn't speak to us or anything. And so we had to tell them. So I don't know, we, but we had to open up those doors. And so he came to the meetings. And so we have a very good relationship with him and he's bringing diversity training to his police force. And we're making him much more aware of how his interactions and how his police force interactions um, impact the community. And so we're trying to have some community policing there. And when an incident occurred at the uh, Lake County Courthouse involving the statue, we felt comfortable enough to go to him and sit and he was willing to meet us. And sometimes it's not whether or not the issue is resolved to your, to how you want it to be resolved, it's whether or not you get a seat at the table. So I can only speak to that one relationship with that one police chief, Stony Lubins and Tavares. Now, I don't know how that would be in Leesburg or, or any of the other surrounding cities. I do know we have some interaction with the Lake County Sheriff's Office. Now, now if you remember last year when they did that, that um, project, when they looked at the email and there was some email and some online posting from the sheriff's department where there was some very racist postings um, from the sheriff's department. And a lot of people weren't happy how that ended where the sheriff said, you know, he didn't charge anybody, but we weren't really satisfied how that ended. So there is some work to be done there, but I don't know if there's any police brutality. I have not heard of any police brutality in the police forces in the county, in, within the county. May, we have an interesting comment or question from Frank Costanzo. Um, and again, his question is only if you're comfortable talking about this, you don't have to do that. Uh, but he asks if you'd be willing to speak to the issue of what it was like going to high school and meeting quote, white boys in the hallway. <laughs> Let me think about that for a minute. So this was um, 1970 and um, we had just integrated to Mary's high school and I'd come from uh, Cromartie Elementary in Tavares, which was a very nurturing, all black um, elementary school um, and to go up to Tavares High School. And at that point, they did not have a junior high school. So it was seventh through 12th grade there. And um, I was walking down the hallway, changing, uh, changing classes and the teacher and I always remember this, it was Ms. Reagan. She kept me after class to talk about being in the spelling bee. And so, and I had a note to go to my next class, but it was in another building. And I came down the hallway and I know the names of the two boys that were there. I will never forget their names. I know exactly who they were. So I was coming down and I had my books, carrying my books folded against my chest as I, school girls do and walking down and they were standing by the lockers and I just just glanced up and caught their eyes and with the most vicious hateful just just boiling out of their eyes and their pores one of them asked what are you looking at inward and so you're talking to a frightened child, girl child, walking down the hallway because there's, there's only three people in the hallway, two white boys, and they were juniors. Yep, they were juniors, two white boys and a scared seventh grader, a terrified seventh grader. And I had to pass by them, you know, I had to pass by them. 
And you don't know what's that, what that's like until you have to do that. When nothing you've done, nothing you've said, not a thing except the color of your skin, nothing you've done except be black. And you're walking down the hallway and you just happen to look up. And so I often wondered if I had kept my head down and just kept walking, would, would they would they have said anything? I just looked up. I just, I just, all I did, the wrong I did was dare to look up. That's all I did. The wrong I did that day was dare to look up. Thank you, so, May. Um, May, here's, here's a, a, a good question perhaps to end on. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, it says the Groveland Four Memorial at the courthouse and the city proclamation sent to Governor DeSantis is a positive story, but it started in the cities and finally the county. So I'm wondering if you would care to comment on that particular question or just a general comment on the Groveland Four Memorial. They should have been exonerated, not pardoned. That's all I can say. They should have been exonerated. Pardon is you did something wrong and we forgive you for doing that. Exonerated is you did nothing wrong. They did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. They should have been exonerated. Okay. And it was long past due. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, May. <clears throat> Thank you for everyone who was sending questions. If we missed a question, I apologize, um, but um, we're, <clears throat> we need to end it there. Um, there was one question, Russ, about whether this will be recorded and available to people uh -huh. later. I don't All know right. if Val wants to speak to that. Um, yes, it is being recorded and I will post it on YouTube. And from your registration, I have each of your emails. So I will email you the link to it um, there, some people registered who I think did not attend, um, something came up, I guess, for them and they might like to see that and you might like to see it and share it with other people. Uh, so we will definitely do that. And also I will send you an email about our next lecture, which will be in two weeks and some coming lectures after that. And we hope to see you again. Thank you all so much. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Again, uh, May, thank you, a heartfelt thank you to you and uh, to everyone who attended this talk. Uh, it, it really was inspiring and, and um, um, I, my heart is, goes out to you. Thank you. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Jane Hepting, who, uh, who's hard work made this series possible and Val Rosado and Kristen Hughes and the technical team who, who worked so hard to master the challenges of making technology work for us. It's not easy, believe me, and these people put a lot of time into it and, and a lot of heart. So uh, as Val has mentioned, uh, we have our second speaker on August 2nd and that will be Jeannie Economos who is an inspired advocate for farm workers and environmentalism. And she will be speaking on where can our farm workers find justice. Until then, again, thank you for coming. Let's keep the light of social justice burning. I will now extinguish our chalice and wish you all a good night. Please, please take care of yourselves. Thank you.